What's going on guys? Welcome to part three of the IS300 ECU relocation slash wire harness extension. So if you are just watching this video and you haven't watched part one and two, part one was the, the, all the prep work that I had to do with cutting open the IS300 engine harness, showing how to depin the connector that, that uh, was on the donor harness, but also it was useful in depending the connectors on the IS300 cutting open the donor harness, which I had to buy a second donor harness when I was doing the part two video. Part two was extending all of the body harness stuff, which goes into these plugs that are now in the floor here. So now part three is extending the engine harness. And I didn't video a lot of this, but there was so much custom work that I'm doing here that probably doesn't apply to most people that are doing this type of thing that I, I figured I'm not going to show it as like a how-to video like I did on the other two part one and part two videos and how, like I do with my other videos. This video, the part three, is going to be me showing what I did uh, just for my documentation purposes in the future in case I have to come back and look like, okay, which way did I route that wire? What did I do here? And I'm trying to figure out what I did so that I can easily cut into it. I can, I can just refer back to this video. But if it's helpful for you, and I'm hoping it will be, then check out this video. And then a little bit after this section of the video, I'll just be snaking in this, uh, this section of the harness into the interior, plugging into the ECU. I do have to fix the boom slang harness that is plugged into the ECU for the piggyback. While I was taking it out, I, one of the wires came out of the pin that goes into the connector. So I've got to put that back in, but also inspect the stability of the other wires as they go into the connector. So if you're wondering what something like this costs, I will say right now, I had to use two donor harnesses and one is from a 2010 Toyota Tacoma. That one I paid 150 bucks for. The other one is from a 2003 RAV4 and I didn't pay anything for that because that was I was parting out that vehicle. It could have been 100 to 150 dollars if I had sold it. So that's what I spent really with using those those two harnesses, 250 to $300. So I bought a connector refresh kit for all of the, the connectors because most of them are broken on the, on the wire harness and I wanted to refresh the ones that were in the worst shape. So that was I think $140 for all of the, the connectors that were going on, which included the option for me to buy the individual ignition coil plugs for the R35 coils that I'm using on the Aristo head. So I've already built out that sub harness Actually, that's going to be in the next video. And then I bought 15 feet of 18-2 shielded wire, which I think was like $20. Uh, but I, I used that to extend the cam position sensor and the crank position sensor on, on the engine because the donor harnesses didn't, didn't have shielded wire that was long enough to extend those. So this wire job essentially cost about 450 or so dollars, depending on how cheap you could find the donor harnesses. And then another question you might be asking was how long this took. This actually has taken me about four weeks to this point because I, there's a few reasons why it took so long. <laughs> One, I, I'm kind of like this. I wanted to keep all the wire colors as close as I could or the same if possible. So that's why I used two Toyota donor harnesses. 95% of the wire colors that are now in the engine harness and the body harness are the same as what they are in the IS300 and on the IS300 wire diagram. And also doing this while working a full-time job and taking care of a dog. And I also worked on a few other people's cars during the process and also had fun with friends. So I wasn't putting a full dedicated four weeks into this. If I had put a dedicated amount of time into this, it probably would have taken me about a week, not working a full-time job and just focusing entirely on this. But yeah, that's, that's about how long it would take. So with the engine harness, one of the things that I wish I had done differently, so I extended the body harness first and then I started extending the engine harness. But while I was doing the, uh, the engine harness, I realized that this wire, so this is a starter solenoid wire. This actually goes into the gray plug that's for the body harness. It's the fattest wire in the gray plug for the body harness. So I originally extended this wire to go into the interior. And then I realized when I started working with the engine harness that I would be extending the other side of the wire that went, cause all this wire did was go into the gray plug and then come out the other side of the gray plug and then go to the starter solenoid. So I'm not going to extend this another 10 feet just to get it to do what I want it to do. So I'm, I'm going to shorten this a little bit actually and probably mount this somewhere up here. And if I want to, I can put a little relay in so that I'll have an extra little immobilizer um, 
starter kill thing. So that's a possibility and it's pretty easy. Had I looked into it deeply enough first and then realized that that's what was going on, I wouldn't have extended it the first time. But now I'm going to shorten it whenever I'm all done with everything. I had a few things that I wanted to make sure that I, I did while I was reconfiguring this engine harness. The main thing was if you're familiar with the IS300, then you know that there's a fat bundle of wires that comes down here inside of the intake manifold that goes into the ECU box that was here. Well, I'm relocating my ECU box, so I didn't want that bundle of wires here curving around and going back because you have, there's like 80% of the wires that control this engine went into that little area just to curve around and go back to the firewall. So what I did is I cut open the entire wire harness, everything, all the sheaths came off, and then I fed all the wires back with the exception of this one brown wire that goes to the igniter. I'm gonna talk about that later. Basically the igniter's coming out, so I didn't wanna bother with running that into the, the wire harness. I wanted to make sure that all the wires that were around this intake manifold went back to the firewall and then shot over to go back through the firewall into where they'll connect into the ECU. So that was one of the main things that I wanted to do with this, which is why I went to such lengths. And to, to do that and to cut into all that, I had to remove this upper intake manifold and this Y-pipe part of the intake manifold with the throttle body. So all of that had to be taken off so that I had full access to the wire harness and I can cut open all of that and then feed all the wires back and over and down and extend each one. Each one of the sections of wire that I extended that go out that way, they're at least six feet long. Some of them are a little longer, some of them are a little shorter, but they're on average six feet long. I'm gonna talk about why that's in foil in a second. That's the O2 sensor. So that was the main thing that I wanted to do was to get that wire loom out of the way to where it wasn't going around the front of my throttle body. Another main thing that I wanted to do was get rid of all the wires that went on top of the head. So all the wires that went on top of the head used to consist of three different O2 sensor wires. Each one of those bundles of O2 wires is four wires each. So that's 12 wires that were going here and going over that. I had the, the crank position sensor that's down there, the three wires for the alternator that's also down there, mass airflow sensor wiring. One of the O2 sensors that I mentioned, it was actually back there. It ran along the top of the exhaust manifold along with the accelerator, the throttle body motor, the pedal position sensor, accelerator position sensor, whatever you want to call it, and three ignition coils. Those all used to run here into a bundle that went over this way. So I wanted to turn the wires around where they ran back that way. So the accelerator position sensor, that goes back to the back of the firewall. The O2 sensor, all the O2 sensors go back to the back of the firewall now. They don't run uh, across the top of the head anymore. The only things that run across the top of the head are the alternator wires and the crank position sensor that's down there. Those are the only two wires that go up through this bundle. This plastic piece broke the little wire guide, so I have this wrapped up fairly well so it doesn't rub on anything and get damaged, and I have it clipped with this. So with these three ignition coils, the IS300 uses a wasted spark setup, so there's one ignition coil for two cylinders. So the, the three ignition coils, I flipped that little harness section over. So where it used to come forward, I took it and I flipped it all over to where now all the wires go back to the back of the firewall. When I did that, I found the two wires. So the wire, the signal wire that went to coil number one and the signal wire that went to coil number three, I cut those. It's the solid black wire and the black wire with the red stripe. So I cut those and I flipped those two wires. <clears throat> so there's two wires here that are black with the red stripe. One is the main power to this igniter unit that comes from the harness. And the other one is the coil signal that goes out of this and is a signal wire for coil number one. So I flipped those two signal wires so that now when the igniter fires, it's firing their appropriate coil. That was the easier thing to do than cutting open this entire harness and depinning connectors and swapping them over. I, I could have probably just swapped over the pins through there now that I think about it but this connector is already broken. And this one didn't come in the connector refresh kit because I ordered all R35 ignition coils, so they didn't send me an igniter plug for the igniter. Then the other main thing that I wanted to do, I kind of touched on a little bit earlier, but I wanted to get rid of all the wires that sat on top of the turbo manifold. They were in that little bit of a, they were in a little bit of a heat shield. So those wires consisted of an O2 sensor, the accelerator position sensor, which is there, and then the throttle body motor, which is here. So all those wires were sitting on top of the, the turbo manifold, which I didn't like because I'm going to have a fat turbo here, a top mount turbo sitting on the exhaust manifold. And I didn't want ugly wires that I'm dealing with and then splices and rewires and everything. I wanted that to look neat. 
So that's why I got rid of all those wires that sat on top of there. And then the mass airflow sensor wires, so they're down here now. They actually run back and then that, this wire that goes all the way back, that's kind of like twisty tied to the, uh, to the strut mount that's the strut bar is taken off right now. I actually don't have this other piece. It didn't come with the car, but I have the bar that goes across the top. So these massive airflow wires, they go back here. There are three that go back to the ECU and one is power, one is ground, so it's five total. But now they don't run along here anymore and go across the top of the head. They just go back by themselves to the back of the firewall. And then O2 sensors. So the O2 sensors were a little confusing whenever I got into the O2 sensor setup for this engine. Basically, Bank 1 Sensor 1 and Bank 2 Sensor 1, so both of the upstream O2 sensors, there was one signal wire off of one of the O2 sensors was split going to the two different signal wire locations on the ECU. That's why this one is out and in foil because it still needs to be connected into the, to, to the system because the computer still needs to read it, that it's, uh, that it's plugged in, that it's there and that it's working. But the signal wire for that one is split off. So that was a little confusing when I got into it, but then I, I realized what they had done because there's only two O2 sensors that are being used on this car. And I think they're bank one sensor one and bank two sensor two. So one upstream and then one downstream. This was a little confusing, and I don't know, maybe someone that's watching this can... This looks like it's just a basic aftermarket O2 harness extension. This originally was run along here on the side of the fender, zip tied to, this, uh, to that loom, and it went down here. That goes into the interior. It's, it's uh, punched through one of the grommets in the firewall, and I haven't been able to get in the passenger seat and see where it leads to yet. I think it's an O2 sensor delete kit. I just want to trace those wires and figure out where that goes to before I, I do anything else with it. Because right now, I do still have to extend those wires a foot so that they connect back into the, the wire loom. So I don't like dealing with shielded wire for one. It's a pain to deal with. It's a pain to solder and it's just, it's a, I, I don't like shielded wire. Two, I'm not going to run O2 sensors anyway. So if the car runs as it is with that one disconnected, and yeah, just with the O2, the other two O2 sensors that are plugged in, I'm gonna leave it like that. I don't care if it has check engine lights. This engine is going to be completely ripped apart, completely overhauled. So away with the O2 sensors. I don't want to wire in another O2 sensor. That's everything with O2 sensors. Cam position sensor was back here. That is extended and it goes back this way. As far as bundles of wires that were bundled up, so there are wires that are blue with a yellow stripe that are bundled up here. And that's kind of like an accessory power for a lot of the, a lot of the systems that are on the car, like, like this, the, the TPS, I think maybe the motor, but there's a few things that they use this blue wire with a yellow stripe. So that's all bundled together here under the, under the, uh, under the intake manifold. If you take off this, uh, this upper intake manifold. So if this is unbolted, you have access to those wires. All of the brown wires that are bundled together, they're bundled together here. The black wires with the red stripe, there's some that'll bundle together there. And I think there's a blue with a red stripe that's also bundled together there. Unless I'm misremembering and thinking about another harness. So now I just want to talk about the extra stuff that I did while I was extending all the wires. Things that I kind of realized that I could do. And I was like, oh, this, this will be cool. If you notice, there's a lot of stuff missing from the front of this intake manifold. Yes, there is. That's because the noise filter that sat here that was, uh, that was wired in with all the injector power, which the injector power, I think is black with the red stripe. So all of those black with the red stripe wires were wired in to this thing, the noise filter. I just moved it to the back of the intake manifold because it's out of the way. Since all my wires are going back, that was one less thing to extend. So I just moved it back there. The wires were long enough. I just, once I pulled it out of the harness, I just slid it back and then bolted it into the back of the intake manifold. Another little thing that I changed, there was a ground point that was down here on the bottom of this intake manifold. So there are two ground points. There's a ground point that's here and there's a ground point that's here. Actually, this one I left the same, but this ground point that used to bolt in there, the wires were long enough when I pulled them out to where I could stretch them. And now it's bolted into the back of the intake manifold. So that kind of cleans up this whole area. There was a bracket here that the harness used to clip into. That's all gone. And I also fixed, this isn't wiring related, but the previous owner had, he had a, a this T connector 
that was going between the blow off valve and his, his uh, boost gauge, which it's not good to have something that has a diaphragm also connected in line with something that's, that's reading pressure like a boost gauge because it'll show fluctuations from the diaphragm that are sending little vacuum pulses kind of like as the, the diaphragm opens and closes, it changes the pressure. So I fixed that. So that goes into this. So the blow off valve now goes in here and this was just capped off. So I moved the cap to there and then this goes to the sensor for the boost gauge. Another thing that I changed. So this vacuum switching valve here used to be all the way over here. Since I'm either going to do an ABS delete or an ABS relocation to where the battery is, all of these tubes that go to it will be out of the way. The VSV tube, which is now moved over here. So this vacuum switching valve tube comes from the gas tank area. Instead of that tube going up and then running up and routing with all those tubes and then coming across there and going behind the ABS controller and then running with the little rubber hose over there to go into the VSV, I just took it out. That's the rest of the tube over there that's on the floor. I bent it up. It's fairly easy to bend up. I think it's like a really soft aluminum that's coated with this thick plastic stuff. I'm not sure, but it seems really cheaply made and it's really easy to bend. It feels like it's just plastic, but when I cut it open, I use this little tube cutter thing, a handy little tube cutter. So I used that and I cut it and then I used the same hose that was over there to connect this. This side used to go into the air box, but it hasn't been connected. This actually wasn't even connected when I got the car. I had to find the hose and then find out where it went to. But this, I could run another hose up here and then plug it in here because this shoots over to this one. And then this can go into the new air box, I guess, if I want to. So now this harness is pretty much set up the way that I want it whenever I reconfigure the engine, put the new head on with the new intake manifold, the new turbo, all of that stuff. The four wires that go to the throttle motor here and then the four wires that go to the throttle position sensor here, I'll be reusing those for the six wire plug that goes onto the G35 throttle body that will be down here. So I'll just have to isolate which ones go to what. And yeah, I'll have six wires in the end because each one of these has two power wires and two ground wires. And there's eight wires total between those two, which means of those eight wires, two are power, two are ground. So I'll have to lose those. So I will have six wires in the end that I can just relocate this to right over here and plug it into the G35 throttle body. The systems that I'll be deleting, I can reuse those wires for, you know, the Mac valve. Like there's a little vacuum switching valve that's back here that's going to be deleted that goes to the little flap thing that's in between the inside of this that's, I don't know why Toyota put it in there, but it's, it's just like a little butterfly valve that sits between these three cylinders and the last three cylinders. And then my knock sensor, here's the wire for the knock sensor. It's not in the loom. I, I didn't have enough to extend it an extra foot. Both knock sensors are extended and then go back. Uh, just in case anyone wants to know, your coolant temperature sensor is down here. Your, this is obviously this is your VBI, VBTI solenoid. Your oil pressure switch and oil pressure sensor are both down here along with the pressure sensor for the power steering pump and the uh, AC compressor clutch. Um, all of that stuff. So all of that comes up here. So that's these wires that are here that are coming up and then are going back there. <laughs> Your cam position sensor sits at the back of the head. That's been extended and goes into the wire harness and everything. When I relocated this, I was thinking I could clip the harness into it because this is that bracket that the, uh, the noise filter was going into, but I couldn't put a clip on there and I couldn't get the, the harness on high enough anyway to clip it in. That's it. This is, for the most part, this is done. I've done everything that I need to do with extending the wire harness. The only thing that I have left to do is move this into the interior, plug it into the ECU, and then fix the boom sling harness. And that's it. Then I can fire up the car and drive it off. So at the end of this video, I will show it successfully running, just in case anybody's like, hey, you did all that wire job, but did it work? They're like, yeah, it's, it's gonna work. I focused on one wire at a time and they're all soldered really well because I pay pretty close attention to detail as evidenced by how I spent probably 10 extra hours finding the exact wire colors that I needed to extend every one of these wires and keep the wire color the same. It's a bold move, but I wanted to keep all my wire colors the same and I'm like that, so. 
setting up the tripod, and I will be feeding these wires into the interior. All right, this is the first start. <laughs> Apparently my windshield wipers were on and stuff was on top of the windshield wipers. Okay, gauges look like they're operating kind of like normal. Feels like a misfire. Come on, don't do that. No, ow. Smooth. Exhaust smells horrible. It smells very lean. What does that have to do with the O2 sensors that I didn't connect? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm probably going to reconnect those O2 sensors that I didn't connect. Anyway, that's all for this video. Um, the car's running. I wired in the O2 sensor, so it's, it's running better now. It's kind of running as it, as it was before. If you can hear, it's kind of like a little struggling a little bit at idle. It was doing that before. I think the spark plugs are really old, and I don't want to change them because there's all new stuff going in. So it is what it is. But uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video was super helpful, super informative. And uh, yeah, God bless you guys.